y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we are going to be doing one of my favorite paintings from last year that was part of my Studio Crew exclusive content from 2022. Um, we're going to be doing the Ink and Wash Dragonfly. So this is gonna include both pen as well as watercolor. Um, and we're going to be doing this beautiful kind of uh, brightly colored dragonfly, which I think just comes out so wonderfully. So I'm excited to release it to you today here on YouTube. If you are interested in Studio Crew membership, you can check out the description of this video. That will get you full access to outlines and additional exclusive content that is only in the Studio Crew. So uh, we are adding new paintings monthly in there and new tutorials that are only available in there. But you're gonna get a treat today and get an older um, Studio Crew piece from last year. So grab your supplies and materials. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Feel free to leave a comment and check out the description for more information. All right, let's get started. Thanks for joining me once again for a new lesson. This is going to be for our Into the Garden series, and we are going to be painting a line and wash dragonfly. So I'm just going to get my new sketchbook set up here. So this is a Strathmore 400 series um, watercolor sketchbook. Strathmore is not my favorite um, paper generally, but I really love this sketchbook with the leather bound front cover. Um, and I'm gonna be pulling together, let's see, my silver black velvet size 12 brush, as well as my Princeton Select size six, the blue one there. And then two of my Fudunosuke Tombow pens. So these are brush pens and we'll need a pencil as well as my gum eraser there. Or I'm sorry, that is my kneaded eraser. Um, so I'm just kind of pulling out all of my supplies right now. There's a Micron pen as well, just to get everything at my fingertips that I may or may not want to use. You can use any kind of um, permanent ink pen. It does not have to be the Fudunosuke or the um, Micron pen, but those are great choices and I really love using them. So I'm gonna transfer or draw out my dragonfly outline here in pencil first. You can go to the outline that is um, available in this classroom session and transfer that onto your page, or you can hand draw one out um, if you're comfortable with that. But I do have this dragonfly outline as a traceable. And once I have it down in pencil, I'm gonna start to sketch out with my Fudunosuke brush pen, um, the outline. Now I'm gonna be very sketchy, and that just means I'm not drawing um, you know, a fine outline where it's steady and stable and uh, the same thickness throughout. I do want it to have a kind of a rough sketch-like feel. I'm gonna be skipping some parts, not filling everything in, and that's just because that's the style. An aesthetic that I'm going for this very um, lots of movement the you know the the lines are ragged and jagged in some places I'm gonna be adding texture to the interior with a smaller thinner pen um, the micron pen um, and that's just the aesthetic I'm going for so you can definitely do line and wash that has stronger steadier lines they tend to be more more of like a coloring book outline and not always the aesthetic I'm going for. I want my line to enhance my piece but not completely control it. I want the watercolor and the pigments to be able to stand on their own as well. Um, but the, the line that I'm using, I'm using it to enhance or exaggerate certain areas or add value to it, but not completely take over the piece um, like a coloring book. So you can see here, leaving some open spots on the wings um, and uh, really creating that texture. All right, after I have my outline down and I have my ink down on that outline, now we can always go back to add more of the pen, which the ink pen, which we are going to do later, but this is the basic outline. So let's prep some of our paints. So I'm using my core palette. Uh, I love my core, Q-O-R by Golden. I love my core palette because the colors are super rich and vibrant, very pigmented, saturated colors. So when I'm trying to paint something bright, 
Uh, I definitely go to this palette often. And I am going to be kind of mixing and matching colors here to make some unique colors by just mixing a lot of my greens together. But let me get you the names of some of these greens. So I have Thalo Blue as that first color there. And then that second color is primarily green gold, but I did tap a little bit into my sap green. But it's a warm, very yellow green color that I'm looking for. And then I've also pulled out my Viridian green there in that third well. So that's a much cooler green color. So we have our Thalo blue, which is a very cool blue, as well as a very um, warm yellow green and a cool green. Now I'm also pulling in some raw sienna. So the raw sienna I'm watering down quite a bit and I'm gonna use that for my background. All right, so I'm gonna make a very loose wash background. So this is a light color, a light wash. I am going over some parts of the dragonfly, kind of right over the wing there and being very loose and just kind of um, creating a background for it to lay on and I'm going to introduce some of that blue around the raw sienna as well and really I'm just trying to create a fun um, streaky background that this dragonfly can sit upon so it's not just completely white but I'm including a lot of the colors that I'll be using within the interior but just in a very light wash now I'm not going completely over the, the middle of the dragonfly. I'm not going completely over the wings because we do want our wings to read as transparent later on. So leaving lots of white space there. But I did introduce some of the color because with transparent wings, you are going to be able to see through them a little bit. And some of the color in the background, you should be able to see through. And once I feel um, satisfied with that background, remember start light, you can always add additional layers. But when I'm happy there, I'm gonna move on to the interior of the dragonfly. I'm gonna switch to my size six. Um, this is a Princeton Select brush. And I'm going to really um, pull very, very vibrant um, phthalo blue onto my brush. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of a dab. So this is not an exact science. I'm not gonna be able to say like, use this color, use this color. I want you to play around with the colors. So I added a little Viridian and Thalo, and I'm gonna outline just the edges of this tail here or the bottom part of, I think it's the thorax, um, and leaving lots of white gaps. So I'm gonna add water so that I'm getting a very um, kind of loose, some areas are lighter, some areas are darker, blended out um, color there on the tail, but very light, very vibrant. I'm gonna continue some of this color up into the body here, as you can see. Again, adding some more water to blend that out and lighten it as it goes up. And I'm even gonna go back in and pull out some of the color in the tail so there are some lighter areas. We'll add a couple layers, so we're gonna play with this. And dragonflies are these beautiful, translucent, I would look at a lot of different pictures of them. I will leave uh, at least one photo in the um, kind of inspirational photos in this classroom. Um, but look at a lot of different pictures of dragonflies and look at the varied colors. There's lots of different shades. And I want you to just play with it and um, create these fun textures where colors are kind of bleeding into each other using water to create lighter areas and then darker areas around the edges or creases of where the different parts of our insect comes together to create these beautiful textured, um, jewel toned, um, vibrant areas. So you can see I'm playing with these three colors and introducing a little bit of um, Hansa yellow light there to create an even more bright yellow color. And I'm just gonna continue to play. Now I am gonna start to um, kind of dabble out on the wings. With the wings, again, I want you to be really careful to leave a lot of white space. Um, you can definitely introduce color and I'm gonna introduce color to them to make them part of the painting because if I just left them completely blank, I don't think they would translate very well. But I am gonna be careful to leave some of the wing areas almost completely void of paint 
Um, not a lot. You can see there's little highlights at the top of this one. There are little bits um, at the edge of this wing here. And the color is more concentrated and darker the closer you get to the body of the dragonfly um, and letting it blend out um, so that way it creates a very um, transparent kind of look and feel to it. I'm gonna introduce a little bit of Payne's Gray to even darken the edges there um, and add a few more layers. So you can see here, I've really kind of darkened the area with Payne's Gray and that um, raw sienna towards the center of our insect. Now I'm gonna give it a nice dry so everything dries completely. So this is our first real layer on our insect. It doesn't look exactly how we want it to yet. It's a base layer of color. Um, there's a lot of texture still missing that's really going to bring this dragonfly alive and create this um, dynamic kind of fun, uh, lots of movement. Um, and we're gonna create that with some more layers of paint as well as an additional layer of our ink drawing to create some more details. So this is just a handheld um, heat gun that I have uh, for crafting. I think I got it either at Michael's or on Amazon, uh, but I will look for a link for it in the supplies. Great handy tool to have. It's got a low velocity of the, the air that actually comes out, so it's not pushing your paint around, but high heat, not too high like some of those mega guns where it's gonna like warp your paper, but great tool to have when you're a little impatient like me and you wanna move along quickly. So now I'm adding on another layer of um, that phthalo blue, and you can see I'm adding more outlines and creating more definition in some areas. So the light area is really starting to pop, and these darker areas are going to start to create separation and contrast to really make our insects come to life. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue color, introduce it to the wing area. Again, being subtle um, and gentle, kind of going slowly. I don't want to overwhelm the area with it. So I have very little paint on my brush um, that's pretty loose um, with lots of water on it. You can see it's a very light color there, but I just want those wings to be incorporated into the rest creating kind of shadow and depth towards the center of that insect again, where the deepest color are, colors are, and giving, giving it a nice dry again. And now I'm gonna prep myself with uh, my Micron pen. So this is a 005 tip, so very, very thin for some really delicate details. But I'm gonna add these, once your paint is completely dry, you can go back in with your um, ink, whether that's a Micron pen or another Fudnosuke pen or another permanent marker. So I'm just gonna be adding some additional details, um, darkening up and thickening up some lines and also adding some really thin um, veins to these wings. So I want them to be really delicate and really thin. So that's why I chose the 005 um, tip for this. Um, other ones would be really, really um, too thick, I think, for this. It wouldn't create this delicate nature. 
Now on dragonfly wings, there's also these tiny little um, kind of cells that make up the wing. Now I don't want to draw every single one of them in. I am going to just give the impression of these in a few areas on each of the wings, kind of towards the center where things are most dense and the color is the darkest where you would be able to see it as we let the wing kind of transition into the most light transparent version towards the end of the wing. So I'm just gonna add these details in and kind of do it slowly but surely, taking a step back every once in a while. Here I zoom in so you can see a little bit more of the specific delicate nature of that. And again, when I'm doing the, the veins of the wing here, I'm trying to be very light and delicate and sketchy. I'm not drawing hard, hard lines. Letting it skip a little bit, I think creates a very nice texture. All right, so I'm gonna go back in and switch back to my Fudunosuke pen, which is, has the thicker tip on it. It's a brush pen, so it has a little flexibility to it. I can go thin, but also press down and get a darker, um, thicker line. And I'm just gonna darken up some areas. I'm gonna go over the tops of the wings, creating a little bit thicker um, detail there. Dragonflies, or at least the some of the pictures I was looking at, have these interesting little notches on the wings. And in some of the areas on the insect where different parts of like the thorax, the body and the tail area, the eyes, they meet each other, creating deeper, darker shadows. I'm going to enhance that with the pen. So I'm just going over some areas you can see here. Um, I am being mindful that this insect is rounded and it has three dimensional shape. So you can see none of my lines are perfectly straight up and down. They have a curve to them. As I go horizontally back and forth, they follow a curve. And even when I go up and down, they're following the curve of the body. Um, so just keep that in mind because that really enhances the three dimensional shape of this object versus creating a more flat version of itself. If you were to just put on very straight um, horizontal and perpendicular lines that didn't follow any curve, that's gonna flatten it where following the curve with the actual marks that you're making are going to, that's gonna enhance um, the three dimensional shape of the object that you are drawing or um, painting. All right, I think we're just about done, but I am gonna pick up my size 12 brush and a little bit more of that phthalo blue, and I'm just gonna enhance the background a bit. I'm going to create a little bit more saturation back there um, just to make it pop a little bit more. You could certainly have left it, but I just wasn't done playing, I guess. So you can see here, I'm not, it's not too intense. It's still a watered down version, but I am just adding a few, um, additional layers, little stripes, kind of keeping with the same theme, the same direction, not changing it up too much, but just adding a little bit more intensity to that background. And here we have our finished piece, nice and dry, our Into the Garden Dragonfly. I really love this piece. It's super vibrant. Um, love the colors, the thalos and greens and that yellow. Um, love the texture created by our um, ink and wash with the fine lines as well as the thicker lines from the Fudunosuke pen. So Fudunosuke Tombow pens and my Micron pen 005. All right, so hopefully you all enjoyed that little throwback piece of content from the 2022 Studio Crew membership. 
I'm Shana Searcy. It's always a pleasure to paint with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out the description of this video if you want links to supplies, more information on Studio Crew membership, and links to my social media accounts. And as always, it's a pleasure to paint with y'all. So we'll see you again soon. Take care. Happy painting.